today, I am going to answer the question that I get quite often, and it's about what zip code should I be buying in when I buy an investment property in Detroit? And by the end of this video, if you have an established opinion about zip code shopping, I hope to change it. So I'm Monique Burns, I am an investor in Detroit. I have my own portfolio of properties and I have, between my husband and I, we have bought, renovated and owned and then sold a good, like, I don't know how many, 175, maybe 200 properties in Detroit. And when it comes to where to buy a house in Detroit, we've got it figured out because we do it, we do it all the time. So I just wanted to tell you, why am I in this car? I'm not driving, don't worry, I'm the passenger here, but I am not in Detroit right now, which is quite unusual for me. I happen to be in the San Diego area of California where my brother Luke lives, there's my brother, and Luke has the website ruralvacantland.com, and he, we're both in real estate, and he buys land all over the country and then he resells it and he has a system and he searches things like zip codes and areas and he's got certain criteria when he looks to buy land. And I was explaining to him, it has become progressively more difficult in Detroit to find land, or not land, to find houses to buy because you all know in 2020 everything got strange and all the prices went up and then there's just all the prices in Detroit have gone up it's been harder to find houses to buy and I was talking to him about his system and he said let's do it together and I thought perfect because what else was been great about coronavirus was the price of airline tickets <laughs> so I said perfect opportunity to take a vacation a work vacation so here I am and my sister lives in the area too snow and blowing snow dangerous cold for so yesterday Luke and I spent several hours and I thought I could learn what he does but woo, um, there's a lot to it I I told my husband later it's like when people say hey how do you renovate a house can I just spend a couple hours with you and maybe then I can go repeat it no, you might learn some stuff, but you can't turn around and renovate a house. And if you want to see how our crew renovates a house, you'll know what I mean if you want to watch my series on how we renovated this one. It's pretty cool, and I learned so much just videoing it, but give me a hammer and forget it. I can't do that stuff. Yeah, and, and this is, it's just like renovating a house. There's so much you learn from trial and error, and let's try this and let's do that. So I sat down with my brother, Luke, there. Oops. And he, um, he and I went over all kinds of um, different kinds of criteria. Like, what criteria were we looking at? What were all our choices? Well, first we started with the area, right? Like, Monique's got very specific areas that she's done deals in. She knows she can price and, and work. And then um, she knows what they rent for, what they sell for, what, what kinds of houses are there to go after and which ones you don't want to go after. I think it's probably even more important, yeah. the ones you don't want versus yeah. the ones you want. And our, our criteria is to. more um, uh, for people that buy and hold, they want the, I, you know the terms, it's the buy and hold types. They're not Investors, necessarily like looking properties. for, yeah, they're not looking to fix and flip for a quick appreciation. They're looking for that income property. The market's turning into you could sell it for the quick appreciation. It's starting to go that way. It is, definitely. Um, and we saw that a lot with the prices of properties and the historical trades that they've been going for recently in the areas that when he knows it's done well in. It was really fun to see just the number crunching because I know the streets. I know yeah. the tenants and my husband knows the renovation. Like if you buy this house that looks like this, it's gonna cost this then you can get a tenant for that but then you were looking at what people are buying them for and selling them for mm -hmm. and the transaction prices and the times to pull them off monique was surprised at the prices that a lot of people are selling them for mm -hmm. they're selling at much really better high. prices <laughs> really, than you really used high. to yeah and um i was surprised that the data doesn't work for stuff because we wanted to get more specific on the build types of the house Mm -hmm. 
that data is lacking in Wayne County. I thought we could get data on um, the numbers of bedrooms and bathrooms and the age. I think it's the age of the houses that are in the neighborhood that she's at. Like that data just wasn't collected in right. the day and it hasn't been updated and it hasn't been kept. But I, I know which ones are the three bedrooms because I know those streets so well. Yeah. Because right? we've bought so many and by, we pick different areas, you know, and, and by multiple within one area. Uh, you know, and then what other data? So we we went with what we thought we could do, which didn't work. But we had the areas, and we figured we'll hit what's there. And so we downloaded the first area, and then we took a taste of the data, right? Like, we, we were able to look at it and understand what data is there. So when we have the whole database on a couple properties, I mean, at first we downloaded, I don't know, a couple hundred properties or something. And then we could see what kind of data was in there, where the columns of whatever information was totally filled in, not just spotty, a little bit here, a little bit there data, because you can't, you can't base decisions off of just spotty data, but conclusive data on some of those properties was there. So we looked at what kind of conclusive data, or encompassing data is maybe a better word, was there, and then said, okay, how can we use that data to target the kinds of houses and the kinds of people that we want to be buying from? Like, it's probably not the people that just bought it for the high prices yesterday. It's probably the ones that have had it for a long time. And it's probably not the ones that have mortgages up the wazoo because, like, we can offer them money, but we're not buying from them. We'd be buying from the bank anyway. And so it's, well, why are we even talking to them, right? So we targeted people that could be actual sellers if they wanted to sell that financially would be in a position to make money or make get money from us offering what we're, what you're comfortable offering, you offering what you're comfortable offering, not me. Looking at the data and making decisions off of what we had to work with, we customized in to who we think are going to be the most targeted people, the highest hit rate, you know, send the least amount of mail, get the most offers back. And we're in the car on the way to the post office to drop yep. it off. Let's see. There they are. Yeah, we just bought this box is a box for vacant land and big dollar vacant land. This is a small mailer for me, but for houses and money getting started and targeting this kind of way. It's I'm a small potatoes. <laughs> so far, I expect it to go bigger, you know, so I need more investors that are interested in buying these properties. Um, I do have a waiting list. We only renovate a few a month. So um, it's called my exclusive buyers list. You can jump on there. If you go to the comment section below, you can find that. Um, I was, you didn't hear this. I got a call today from an investor and I do have a few properties for sale on my website. Ones that we renovated between like 2015 to 2018, but he was looking at buying a package and I have them kind of in packages. So the flyers on my website are, are different colors. So like there's a set of gray ones and the guy has three properties and he was interested in the, the gray set. And he said that he had a contact in Detroit and he called her up and, he, and she said, that's a terrible zip code. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not going to argue with people, you know, I, I can tell you what I wanted to say. How many houses has she renovated, sold, rented on the four streets in that entire zip code that we dominate? You know, how much have those houses appreciated on those four streets that we had? I don't know what we've done in, the, in that particular spot in this very condensed area. We've got... Um, I don't know, between 50 and 60 houses that we've done there. And the things like what I know about that neighborhood, the end of the street is the best school. So the moms love this neighborhood. And across from one of the major intersections there, and don't call me and say, 
what are those four streets? <laughs> but across from that intersection there, it's awesome because there's a grocery store and Detroit is such a food desert that people have to go to the party store or the liquor store to get their groceries. Unless they live in this neighborhood, it's like right there. And there's also really good public transportation and Detroit doesn't have the best public transportation. But it so happens that there's good bus stops right there yeah. and there's a Home Depot there and there's a mall albeit not the best mall, but there is a mall like within walking distance as well. And whenever I've had a house like available for rent in that neighborhood, I am flooded. I'm always flooded, but I am so flooded. And we kind of like marked ourselves out of that, out of that neighborhood because we sold the houses back in 2015 and we jacked up the prices and uh, a real estate agent called me once and she said, I just sold a house for a man in the same neighborhood that I see you've sold many houses and he's very upset because you got a higher price than what he did and how did you do that? And I said, well, you know, I have a property that's producing income and it's fully renovated and our properties are, are we, when we renovate them, we know what to do so that they will pass the city certification, which is a big expensive process in Detroit. Yeah. And there's a whole big thing about lead paint around here. If you've ever heard of the city of Flint, they had this water crisis and now Detroit's like, we're gonna do the best so that we don't have that problem. And they're the strictest city in the country from what I've heard as far as what they require with lead paint. And we know how to pass section eight inspections. The, the different uh, section eight inspectors know my husband and just like building relationships is so absolutely huge. But anyway, zip codes, don't go by zip codes you have to have your block. And Luke and I totally saw that, like when we were looking at um, tax prices too. And when we were looking at, um, I don't know, there are all can, different kinds of things it. we could target. You can see it in what's for sale, the ones that are still for sale. There's more of them for sale on the bomb out, burned down streets that yeah. you don't want to be on. That uh, happen to be a ways away from the bus stops you're talking about, like public transportation, the ones further away from public transportation seem to be lower price, less less uh, fixed up, less regentrified and coming around than the ones that are closer to the that's things that I you're talking war about. That's what I call war zone. War zone, okay. I don't so, know if that's politically correct, but yeah, the war, kind of rough. The war zone streets. So like targeting properties, they look cheaper and easier to be had there, but Monique says skip this one and skip that one, like laser precise sharp because she knows the areas yeah. to be able to hit the ones we want versus the ones we don't want. Right, yeah. And I've um, never worked with other real estate agents either. I was kind of surprised when he brought up his real estate agent. Um, my, the way I do real estate, I guess it's just different. I the numbers have buy them myself. The numbers haven't them. worked. They're, yeah, it wouldn't make they're sense They're not for economic me. for people to go work on it as a real estate agent. But now they're starting to come around. The numbers start working for the banks. Like people can start borrowing money to buy these things and get really small monthly payments and pay a real estate agent and like yeah. stick it into the mortgage. Yeah. Like the insurance was working. When we first started buying in that area, the insurance wasn't working. He was one of my first investors. <laughs> you couldn't get insurance on the properties. Like how do you buy a house without insurance? I don't insurance? remember that. We couldn't even get insurance on them? No, I was buying them in cash with no insurance. <laughs> they're like, you're in California. The houses are in Michigan. No insurance. I called everybody. No insurance. Oh, uh, we've got it now for um, 600 a year, the insurance is. Yeah, but I mean, they wanted like, when I started getting it, it was, I mean, it was like $400 a month. It was not, it, 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 it just like saying no compared to the rent and everything. It didn't make yeah, any sense I remember at that all. Now. Mm -hmm. No sense. Yeah. But that was, at least they started offering it. That was maybe 2013, 14. You started in 2008, 9, 10. Yeah, there was no insurance, 2008, 9, 10. You couldn't get insurance. And the dollar prices of the houses were too low to get finance through banks or regular financial institutions. You gotta borrow against something else or have the cash. Yeah. So hopefully you're getting, you're picking up what I'm putting down about zip codes. And if you call me and say, what's the best zip code? I'll know you didn't watch my video. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you get some of these properties and you don't have enough capacity to fix them up. I think that's what's going to happen, Monique. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to find out. You can sell them to people who probably pay you more than you make off of fixing them up and selling them fixed up. Yeah, I'm 
I'm just gonna sell them. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't wanna be buttoned into, this is all I do. We buy, renovate, sell, you know, because you don't the have whole to. Property like, management one of the biggest things anymore. about land, I'm always doing land. Don't touch the land. Like, don't touch the land. Everyone wants to go touch it. When they buy it, they're going to like, I'm going to add a driveway. I'm going to add this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Like, it takes a lot of time and money and work and logistics. And pictures work a lot better. Like, get a picture of the property and a location. And it goes from unknown, not in the market, the price that I made up. To buy it at that makes sense to buy it in whatever the marketplace is and then you go put it on the market it's something less than what everyone else is selling them for like even significantly less to watch it go fast like this is if i had this money now without fixing it up i'd be happy and the person buying it could go fix it up and sell it for more and make out too yeah and but if, if if it's sitting on the market long enough i'm gonna fix it up and sell it to somebody who wants to use FHA financing or something to buy this thing and live there. Yeah. You know, and, and pay $200 a month mortgage or whatever it is. Okay. So if you guys have questions, I love it. Leave a comment below. I'm planning in my head so far uh, another series. I made a whole series of Section 8 tips for landlords out there. But the one I'm thinking about making now is if you are out of state, how do you find a property management company? And I've been getting a lot of information lately about how different property management companies work and how they don't work, what's good, what's bad. I thought like, oh, if I were to buy a house in another state, which I have no intentions of doing because Detroit's the hottest market ever, you don't really have to shop because I can tell you exactly what to do. But I do want to put that out there so that you can get the whole concept because once you buy a house that's an income producing property, if you're not going to fix it yourself and fix it up to live in or whatever, but if you're going to buy a, a renovated house or you plan on renovating it and putting it in property management, if you have the wrong property management, it can destroy you, destroy your business. So anyway, I'm going to make that series. Let me know if that's something that you would like to see. And we are we at the um, post office? Yeah. I'm so excited. Is, I heard this is like walking this into is a the factory. Commercial regional distribution post office, not your neighborhood post office. I've never done anything like this. <laughs> this is really cool. It's really cool. Okay. Check check us out, both of us. We're both on TikTok too. You can see our like short little clips. I don't know if they'll let me TikTok in there, will they? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's it. Thanks for watching. So. Yep, bye.